All right, now what we're doing, if you can look back there and see the blonde way back there, it's probably, actually it's about 40 yards from here. It probably looks further away on this GoPro. But we're going to walk down this road that the gobbler came out last spring. Um, when I, you know, the one that I shot on with my recurve. And we're going to walk down this road. Head back to the truck. And that, the ash borer has really taken its toll on these ash trees. Most of them are dead or, or dying or already down. said earlier this woods approximately 40 acres or so give or take and, uh, folks it is thick it is thick in there that's a good book sanctuary in the in the fall a lot of times the longest edge down here along the cornfield edge is some a lot of down timber pushed over timber where the farmer cleared his fence rows out and he piled it up where it's probably some areas is probably 15 feet high and the, the deer can't get through it so they either got to come out one one end or this end there is one spot in the middle where they can come out and go into the cornfield and you know what that is that's funnel supreme We don't try to get down into these woods too often in the fall. I might sneak down through there on a drizzly day, still hunting. That's where I uh, snuck up on this uh, a nice, nice ten point, and uh, he come out. I, I happened to catch him moving before he caught me, and. He come out from behind this uh, thick, bushy area out into the open there. And when I drew back and released, he was like 10 yards. And uh, I want to tell you, this sapling grew up just a little bigger than my thumb. And I centered that thing. I got a picture of the broadhead sticking right in that sapling. And of course, I was using my recurve then. Actually, I was using the longbow on that hunt, my longbow. But it ended up that uh, he jumped off about 20 yards, stopped and turned around and looked at me long enough for me to get another arrow in. And right when I got the other arrow in, guess what? He took off like a scalded dog. you look ahead of us there there's a, a buddy tree stand on that ash tree which is now dead so this spring or summer we are going to move it to this big oak which would be a little more ideal location also. We can actually see in that direction and all the way back to the cornfield in that direction and cover this big woods. And then if you remember when we came in, I told you I had a stand and it happens to be right over there. So, you might say, well, they're only 50 yards apart, but I want to tell you something, friends. When you're bow hunting, 50 yards can be 50 miles.
So you know, some folks, they like to spend their money on this and that and gambling and trucks and cars and hot rods and whatever. I like to spend what little bit of money I have for an extra tree stand. Extra dozen arrows. Something of the sort. And I'm not hammering on anybody that wants to spend money on their cars or whatever. That's up to you if you want to do that. But it's up to me if I want to do this. 68 years old almost and uh, if it happens to be I want to go out this way. giant oaks in here. Look. Look at that. I've gotten older the emphasis on hunting has shifted from having to make a kill to the experience in the woods just being there even even if I miss an opportunity at a big buck I'm not saying it makes me happy, but I'm saying that I've accomplished that hunt, in my opinion. I'm capturing it on film, on video now, I can always go back and say, look boys, what I saw. So releasing an arrow is not always the climax of the hunt. That's just when the work begins. devils on this honey locust look at them thorns from my understanding these thorns I just showed you are tiny ones compared to what was pounded into the brow of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ So that you and I, you and I, could enjoy life in this world and in the world to come. Have a great day. God bless.